Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and as promised at the end of Tuesday's episode, we have another author interview for you today. As a reminder, you um, are eligible to enter a giveaway to win a copy of the book that we talked about on Tuesday's episode. And actually, there's another giveaway for this episode. So just stay tuned to the end and I will remind you on how to go about entering those giveaways. You have a chance to win two really good books. Very different, but really good. So today I am interviewing Jennifer Wilk about the third in her series of books. This one is called Learning to Love and it is about Dina and Adam. Dina Jacobs is a single librarian who has never fit in due to her off-the-charts intelligence, frizzy hair, and rounder-than-socially acceptable figure. She left her past behind until she receives an invitation to her 10-year high school reunion, and all her insecurities return. Adam Mandel is a single corporate attorney who just missed his third deadline at his father's law firm, the law firm where he is up for junior partner. With his reputation on the line, Adam needs all the help he can get to convince his father that he deserves the promotion. When Dina and Adam run into each other on a deserted road, Dina thinks Mr. Flashy Pants can't possibly be interested in someone like her. Adam thinks Dina is just the person to help him improve his reputation. Lies and insecurities force them to take a look at themselves. Can they trust each other to look beyond the surface? So, yeah, there you have the description of learning to love. It's got a great meet cute where they meet on the side of the road and there's, you know, misunderstandings ensue, but then they develop um, a relationship that as often is the case with stories like this is based on not exactly mutual interest, although there's mutual interest on both parts, but then they end up with a relationship based on kind of a deal that they make. And Jennifer will talk more about that when she talks about the book. You know, there's lots of um, misunderstandings, miscommunications, no communication, and having to figure out some of their own issues in order to develop a true relationship with one another, which of course they do because it's a romance and it, you know, that's the way romances work and they, that's what I love about them. So that is a brief description of learning to love. I loved Dina as a character because it, the very first description of her, she has got an armful of books and she's just pulled up to the library where she is a librarian. So, I mean, literally in the first sentence that described Dina, I was like, yep, I already like her. Uh, I'm going to like her character. Uh, it doesn't even matter what she does after this. She's got an arm full of books and she's she works in a library. She is my spirit animal. And th that, my opinion, did not change. She cracked me up. She has some quirks that I am somewhat familiar with, maybe not to the extent that Dina has them, but I can completely understand. So I'm going to stop talking and let Jennifer talk about her own book. So let's go ahead and get started with that interview. Again, the book is Learning to Love, and it is by Jennifer Wilk. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thanks so much for having me. Today, we are going to talk about your new book, Learning to Love. But before we get to the book, if you could share just a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you, that would be great. Sure. Um, I'm a writer from New Jersey. I am published with the Wild Rose Press, and I also do a little self-publishing. Um, I have two teenage daughters, one of whom is in college, one of whom is uh, just about to be. Um, I'm married and we have a um, rescue dog who pretty much runs the house. Thank you so much for that. So as I said, we are here to talk about your new book, Learning to Love. Can you tell us a little bit about the story? 
Um, it's a contemporary romance. It is actually the third book in a series, but um, each book in the series takes a look at a different couple, so you don't really need to have read any of the previous books. Um, it's just kind of a group of friends, and um, each group look each book looks at a different romance. So Dina and Adam um, meet kind of by happenstance, and Dina is a genius. Uh, she works in a library. She's very quiet. Um, she's not particularly outgoing. And Adam is the exact opposite. When she sees him, she thinks he's Mr. Flashy Pants. Um, and he helps her change a tire. And that's how they kind of meet each other. And they happen to um, work in the same town and run into each other. And eventually, um, they kind of make a bargain or they fall into a bargain. She has to go to her high school reunion, which she's very uncomfortable about. Um, and he needs um, someone to kind of help him improve his reputation. So they kind of agree to help each other out. And along the way, they fall in love. Yes, they do. So did you have a particular inspiration for this story? I did, actually. So Adam is um, a character who appeared briefly in the other two books. Um, he was more of, of like a friend, and um, he was kind of a shallow guy. He's kind of a player. Um, but I always knew I eventually wanted to do something with him, and I wanted to like find his soul and really dig down deep and make him much more have a lot more depth than he portrayed and then kind of figure out, well, why doesn't he show that off very often? Um, so he's always been in the back of my mind. Um, but I watch, I don't know if anybody else does, but I watch the show Criminal Minds and mm -hmm. there is a, um, <laughs> okay, so it, it's not a murder mystery at all, but, um, there's a character, Spencer Reed, who is also a genius and he knows everything about everything. Um, anytime there's, you know, he just spouts facts constantly. Um, and so my character of Dina, whenever she's uncomfortable, which happens quite often, um, she spouts random facts that she knows. Um, yes. So at, Adam will be leaning over to kiss her. She gets uncomfortable and she'll start talking about, did you know the first kiss was blah, blah, blah. Um, and so she really kind of provided. So that was my inspiration for her. And then it kind of took off from there. And she was a lot of fun to play with. Uh, so what kind of research did you do, especially in terms of all of <laughs> Dina's random facts? Or are those in your head already? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I had to find a lot of things. Um, I, I did a lot of research on the Internet. Thank goodness for Google. Um, yeah. Pretty much any time there was any situation, I just sort of looked at it and said, OK, what can she pull out of here? So um, when she meets his father for the first time, he's this very um, overbearing and very um, straight laced man. Um, very disapproving of everything. And he serves. He starts pouring some whiskey. So she starts telling him about, well, if you laid all the whiskey bottles end to end, they would, you know, circle the globe however many times. Um, and so I, you know, looked up like random facts about whiskey and random facts about um, chocolate and um, the first baseball game. And um, it was just, it was a lot of fun to do research about that because I don't, I, there's always some, there's always something I need to research, but it's not like I'm writing, um, an historical romance where I need to rom research the time period. So, you know, I right. kind of am comfortable in where I'm setting the book. So there's not a ton that I have to do. I might have to research, um, you know, some of the professions. So I actually did have to look into being a librarian and what that entails. And, and you know, it's more than just shelving books. Um, but the researching those facts was very entertaining. <laughs> I bet. I loved all the random facts that she spewed. Speaking of random facts, did you know that when you sign up for Audible, you get a 30 days free trial and with that 30 days, you get a free audiobook? Again, I know I keep saying it, but what's not to love? Uh, we have been talking about Audible and I have been talking about how much I love Audible. I listen to audiobooks all of the time. Well, if you haven't thought about trying Audible, you should, or maybe you're looking for a last minute um, holiday gift. Audible's a great option. You can give the gift of listening by giving yourself or someone else a, an Audible subscription. If you go to audible.com slash GSMC book or text GSMC book to 500 500, you can 
you can explore all of their books. You can get that 30 day free trial and that free audiobook. And you can really get to know and love Audible. They have such a huge selection, uh, whether you like romances, like we're talking about today, whether you like nonfiction or mysteries or memoirs, whatever it is that you like to read or listen to, you're going to find it on Audible. Each month, you get a credit for one audiobook from their entire collection. You also get to choose two of their Audible originals, and they've got some great selections there, things that you can't get anywhere else. You can cancel any time. You can keep whatever you have. You don't have to return it if you do cancel. So you should check it out. Just go to audible.com slash GSMC book or text GSMC book to 500, 500 and give yourself or someone else the gift of listening. We are going to take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about learning to love with author Jennifer Wilt. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC book review podcast, and we'll be right back. What happens to your decision making when you drink? Well, after one drink, you feel confident. A few more. And calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea. And you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington Target Zero. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with Jennifer Wilk about her book, Learning to Love. Let's go ahead and get back to that interview. So talk a little bit more about Dina and Adam as the main characters. What about them do you think might resonate with readers? Well, um, this is a book, this is one of my books where the characters are Jewish. Um, and so they're not ultra religious by any means. They're, you know, no different than anyone else. Um, as far as lifestyle goes, but um, there is some religion that plays into it. Um, I always find that a little interesting to do. I I love reading um, books with characters of different, you know, nationalities or cultures or whatever. And since I'm Jewish, it was kind of nice to have characters that I understand. Um, so they are Jewish. Um, and you'll see that on a, you know, a Friday night, they'll go to temple and then they'll do something else or, um, you know, she'll say a blessing over a candle or something. Um, the other thing, Dino is not like um, the other heroines that I've written before. She's not the typical romance heroine where she's perfect. She, um, you know, she has very frizzy hair, which she does not like, which is very difficult to manage. Adam happens to love it. And every time she threatens to do something with her hair, he's like, don't touch it, please. Um, she is, um, I'm hoping I gave a body positive image. She's curvier than a typical romance heroine. Um, she's just, she's kind of like, like an average person she's not perfect she doesn't have her life all in order um so that was you know that's one thing i think that will resonate um and as far as adam goes again i was really looking to find um what made him tick and why he portrays himself as this very superficial perfect person when in reality he isn't um so taking a look at, you know, how he grew up and what he's afraid of and how Dina is able to see beneath his surface. Um, you know, I, I think that will resonate as well. Yeah, Adam really does have, especially in the beginning, two very distinct aspects of his personality that he shows depending on the company that he's in at the time. And it, it had to have been frustrating. It was frustrating as a reader. It has to be frustrating for Dina as a character. So you mentioned location as well as your being Jewish. Are there any other autobiographical elements in the book or the characters? Um, I usually try to put like a little piece of um, like, I usually try to put a little something in there. For instance, um, in one book that I wrote, um, the grandmother makes stuffed cabbage, and that was something that my great-grandmother would always make. So, like, that's something of mine. 
Um, in this one, I don't think the only biographical thing would be um, he went to school in St. Louis, and so did I. Okay. Thank you for that. You also mentioned that this is the third in a series, that they're standalone novels, but they have connections. Can you talk a little bit about the other two books in this series then? Sure. Um, the series is called the Serendipity Series. Um, it's got two pr books previous to it. The first one was Addicted to Love, um, and the second is um, Five Minutes to Love. So um, the, the titles kind of connect. Um, Addicted to Love is with um, two characters, Hannah and Dan. Dan is a widowed father of a teenager, and Hannah is um, younger than him by about 10 years. And they meet at a local uh, Jewish community center. Um, and Hannah lives with her grandmother, and there's some addiction that plays into it um, on both Dan's part and on Hannah's brother's part. Um, and it takes place in Hoboken. And then um, Five Minutes to Love is um, Hannah's best friend, Aviva, and Adam from this current book, his best friend, Jacob. Um, and so those two characters meet over a failed speed date. Um, they go to a speed dating event. They're both dragged to it. And neither one of them wants to be there. So when they meet each other during their five-minute time period, they uh, plot an escape. And that's how they meet. <laughs> I think I would plot an escape from speed dating, too. I'm, I'm sure it works, but it sounds horrifying to me. <laughs> I know. Me, too. <laughs> I noticed that the cover for these three books all are fairly similar. The, the characters are touching foreheads on the covers. Was that uh, your idea, or did you have someone else design them, and did they come up with that as a concept? Um, the Wild Rose Press does their covers on their own. Um, as when we get our contracts, we also fill out a um, an art sheet. So um, we describe the hero and heroine. We mention any particular themes in the book. So, for example, in Five Minutes to Love, I said, you know, this is a speed dating thing, so a clock would be awesome. Um, but beyond that, I don't get very much control. I did say that since the books are connected, I would like the covers to look um, to have a, a, you know, a similarity among them so that you can see that they go together. Um, and so my cover artist was, did a beautiful job and um, she, you know, made each book, even though they came at different times, um, similar enough so that you can see. So I'm pretty confident that her, you know, the hero and the heroine touching foreheads was, um, was intentional. The, um, the interesting part of that was um, they, my publisher changed the way they do covers in between book two and book three um, and said, you know, we're kind of revising our system and we're revising what our covers are going to look like. And, uh, you know, that's what's happening. And I said to myself, oh, my goodness, I'm in the middle of a series. And if this turns <laughs> into like some, you know, oh, my gosh, like I really need them to look at least similar to each other. And um, then they showed me the cover for uh, Learning to Love. And I breathed a sigh of relief. And I was like, oh, I love this. It's beautiful. Thank you. And OK, it, it again, is similar enough to the other two. It works. Thank you. <laughs> Right. That had to have been a relief. What's next? Are there other books in this series? Um, I think this series is pretty much done. I mean, I would still, I, I write some of the books I write are Jewish and some are not. So I would still write some um, books that, you know, feature Jewish characters. But as far as this series goes, I think this one is done. Um, I'm currently working on another series that I, um, it's still in the really early stages. It's um, projected to be four books. It's about four um, very, very wealthy men who have more money than, who are at the, the tops of their fields, and they have more money than they know what to do with for themselves. So they are, they're all best friends, and they pool their money into um, a fund to, for philanthropy. And so each book deals with each man and then the woman that they meet. Okay, thank you. Let's talk a little bit about writing in general. Is it something that you've always wanted to do or did you come to it later in life? How'd that work? Um, I've always loved writing. I was never really a math and science person. I was always, you know, the English type of person. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And I loved writing even from, a, you know, even when I was a child. Um, 
And I didn't know, it wasn't something that I said, oh, this is what I'm going to do as a career. Although when I was um, working um, in other fields, I was, um, for a time, I was working, um, I was a magazine editor and I was um, in public relations. So I was always doing something with writing. Um, and then once my kids were born and I was home, when they would, I needed a way to express myself and just kind of, you know, get a little break. Um, and so when they were asleep, I was writing. And in 2006, I wrote my first book and it took a long time to get published. There was a lot of editing and rewrites and contest submissions and um, critique partners. And then um, my first, it was published in 2011, I believe. Okay. And then I've been writing since then. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, I need to jump in here and interrupt one more time. And I'm going to talk to you about Audible again. Audible.com slash GSMC book. Or if you text audible.com, no, if you text GSMC book to 500 500, you can get a free audiobook. You can get a 30 day free trial. And with that 30 day free trial, you get a free audiobook. Is there something that you've wanted to check out on audiobook for a while? Take advantage of this deal. Go to audible.com slash GSMC book or text GSMC book to 500 500 and start your free trial. They have a huge selection. Um, you can find all sorts of things. I love to listen to, it dur do to audiobooks during my commute while I'm working out. They have romances like we're talking about with Jennifer today. They have mysteries, memoirs, um, self-help books fitness programs. They have Audible Originals that you can't find anywhere else. And you get to choose two Audible Originals every month in addition to the one title that you get every month that you can choose from their entire catalog. It's a great deal. You should give yourself or you should give someone else the gift of listening this holiday season. Again, go to audible.com slash GSMC book or text GSMC book to 500 500 start that free trial get your free audiobook and give yourself or someone else the gift let's go ahead and take our second break of the podcast stay tuned you're listening to the GSMC book review podcast and we'll be right back what happens to your decision making when you drink well after one drink you feel confident a few more and calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea and you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington Target Zero. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Jennifer. Before the break, Jennifer was talking about her own experiences of writing and what, you know, when she started writing, what it took to get to be a published author, etc. Out of your own experience then, do you have advice for aspiring authors? You know what? I think the best advice is, number one, to learn as much as you can about the craft, um, you know, make sure that you, in addition to just, you know, good grammar and good punctuation, different genres have different styles of writing. So whatever you're going to write, you know, read that genre so you understand how it works. Um, take classes, join associations, talk to people, um, get comfortable showing your work to people, whether it's through contests or finding someone to critique you. Um, or a beta reader, and then um, just write and don't give up. Um, you know, take to heart the comments that people give you and decide whether sometimes the comments are, that are given are, nece are necessary to take. Um, other times they're more subjective. Um, so as long as the comments you're given are going to make your work better, take them and use them to make a better product and just keep writing. Um, and get inspiration wherever you can. You know, don't just sit at your computer all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, just, you know, don't give up. 
which when you think about it is good advice for most areas of life. Uh, when you read, do you have favorite authors or genres? What do you like to read when you have the time? I read a little bit of everything. Um, I just read Sonali Dev's A Bollywood Affair, and it is, I think, my number one all-time favorite book. I absolutely oh, wow. loved it. Um, it's a romance. Um, she's Indian, and it's it takes place in the U.S. and in India, and I felt like I was right there. Um, it was just so enthralling. I absolutely loved the book. Um, so she's my current new favorite author. Um, I also like reading mysteries. L.A. Chandler is, um, has a great art deco series. She's phenomenal. Um, and I also read some women's fiction, historical romance. Um, and then sometimes my husband's reading a, a good, um, good mystery or something. And I'm like, oh, let me look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that is always good when you, you can steal someone else's book. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you don't need that right now. I'm going to borrow this. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that, but except that then it just makes your TBR list so much bigger, so much longer. But I mine's know, never going to be know. finished anyway. It isn't. And my husband does not understand why I keep adding to it. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> I know. We just moved. And my husband said, <laughs> I hate moving your books. And I was like, but they're my books. <laughs> Yeah, I have most of mine on my Kindle, so he can't actually see how long it is. Um, right. Except he, you know, except when I'm like, oh yeah, I bought another whole bunch of books. He's like, are you never going to get to these? I'm like, that's okay, they're on there, it's good. <laughs> that's right. That I know that they're there. I just found my Kindle. It was in a box, and I couldn't find the box. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was horrifying. Um, so, moving on. You have a website, and uh, so give the give the address of your website, and also tell where people can find you on social media. Oh, good, because I love talking to people on social media. My um, website is my name, so it's www.jenniferwilk, W-I-L-C-K, dot com. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I have an author page, Jennifer Wilk, and um, I'm on Twitter at jwilk. Very creative names and um, Instagram <laughs> as well. <laughs> and Instagram, I'm author Jennifer Wilk. Thank you so much for that. We've talked a bit about your books. Uh, the new one is Learning to Love. We've talked a little bit about your upcoming works. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to share, whether it's about writing or your books in general, or just really anything we haven't covered? Um. I think just as far as the Jewish element goes, um, I, like I said, I love reading about all different, you know, people and whatever, but I also like to see myself sometimes in them, um, to see things that I relate to. And so as much as, you know, um, so when I chose to write some of my books with Jewish characters, it was just to kind of make it mainstream and, and kind of um, leave the Judaism in as opposed to making it a tutorial. Um, it was just mm -hmm. kind of to give it some added flavor, added color. Um, it's nice to see myself, you know, or myself in these books. And it's also nice for readers to see themselves in it, in it or on the other hand, for readers to say, oh, wow, okay, this is kind of like real life because, you know, we live in environments where there's all different types of people and it's nice to see a variety in what we're reading. So that was kind of the reason why I, I chose to do that. Some of the Jewish elements lend themselves well to themes in romance. Um, so mm -hmm. sometimes um, like some of the holidays, you can kind of boil them down to um, – um, uh, okay, so Yom Kippur is where we're asking for forgiveness. Well, forgiveness is a huge element in romance. And so you yes. can have a hero and a heroine looking, needing forgiveness in order to get together. So it just adds a little depth to it. And that was one of my favorite parts of the book, the fact that the main characters are Jewish. Uh, you know, it's just a simple thing. But when I see people in books that don't look like me, that means they look like someone else, which means that um, more people than a certain type of person are being represented, you know, whether it's people of color or people of different um, cultures or religions. I really appreciate when I get to read a book about, again, someone that doesn't look like me, because then, as I said, it, it means that there's more representation and that the people do look like someone else. 
So I exactly. love that you left that. In. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And um, you know, the there are some Jewish romances out there, but they tend to be like Hanukkah books, and and there's more than just a holiday. Like you can just have a, a regular any old day, but have different types of characters who look different or sound different or act differently. Um, and I think it just adds some more flavor to it. So yeah. I just think it's nice. And I think it really helps for people to read books where the main characters don't necessarily look like them because it helps them to learn about something that they might not have experience with, whether that's a different culture or a different uh, religion, you know, that people are people, whether they go to a temple or a, a church or a mosque or what have you. Exactly. Um, I actually was just talking on the on a recent episode about Christmas books, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. this time of year I like to watch Christmas movies and, and read Christmas right. books. And I was like, I really want to know if there are Hanukkah books. So you, I'm going to pick your brain <laughs> later <laughs> offline and, and get, get some really good Hanukkah books for this time of year because I want to start reading other <laughs> holidays. There are a few. I think Sarah Wendell, um, she, write, she writes the column Smart, uh, Smart Bitches Trashy Books. Um, she writes a Hanukkah book, and there are a couple of others, um, but I'd ha I have to, I'll have to pick my brain and figure out a few to give you. Okay, because, yeah, I would love it. I would <laughs> love to add that into my holiday reading just for, just for a little variety. So, um, yeah. Well, I want to say thank you. I've had so much fun chatting with you, and I really want to say thank you for coming on and taking the time out of your weekend to come and talk to me about your books. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for making the time for me. Once again, thank you so much to Jennifer for taking the time out of her weekend to talk to me. Thank you to you, my listeners. If you're interested in this book or the book we talked about on Tuesday, you can enter the giveaway to win a copy of these fabulous books. To win a copy of Jennifer's book, all you have to do is go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and comment on this episode. It's episode 130, Interview with Jennifer Wilk. That's it. Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and just make a quick comment on that post and you'll be eligible to win a copy of Learning to Love by Jennifer. Thanks again to Jennifer. Thank you so much to you. Um, I don't think I'll talk to you again before Christmas, so have a Merry Christmas if you celebrate. I hope you get some time with family, time with friends, whatever it is that you like to do to celebrate this time of year. I hope you get that. Hey, if you just want to spend your time off cozy up with a good book. I totally support that too. So thank you for joining me. Join me again next week when I'll be talking with author David Sklar about his book, Atlas of Men. In the meantime, Merry Christmas and go get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.